Okay. finalizing project groups and availability. I'm going to rearrange the seating a bit so that it's easier for me to remember you all. Mm -hmm. And then we'll dive in on uh, uh, web development. First, the first of the, the, the guts of the toolbox for this class. So um, first of all, I wanted to point out for you, uh, <clears throat> I had recording problems with the first two sessions, but in general, I record each of these classes and I then post them um, to Blackboard. So if you just open up the syllabus in Blackboard, um, you'll see if you control click on any date that has a hyperlink behind it, that'll bring you to a YouTube video, which, uh, okay, if I stop talking and turn this up, thank goodness, like both times I came in here and I meant to record and I get excited talking to you guys and I forget to click record twice so not this the time. volumes not very good so in this particular room but um, you're you're more than welcome to go back review anything that you want in the uh, the podcast of these uh, these classes I'll, I'll try and post them at the end of each week I may not be able to post today's before Thursday but on the weekend I'll try and post the, the last week's uh, lecture so just FYI, those are there. So, that's that. Um, <clears throat> next thing I wanted to go through was finalize teams and availability and rearrange our seating a bit. So, uh, first off, Jonathan, you told me uh, in the other class your basic availability, but I forget what it was. Can you tell me again? You're the only person from the Condors group. I don't have that for you yet. Folks, if, if you're not Jonathan, please be quiet so I can hear him. So before, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's before 2.30. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, before 2.30, okay. And then the gap between our last class and this one on Tuesday and Thursdays. Okay. And then any time after 2.15 on Monday and Wednesday. Uh, before or after? After. After 2.15 on Monday and Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, I am going to close this door for a little while actually because we have successfully like cooled down the building, but now like the cooling is so loud I can't I can't hear Jonathan talking halfway back. Um, okay, um, and have you sent me a professional development plan yet, man? Yeah. When did you send it?
I think I recorded it for one class and not the other. Let me see here. Yep, sure did. I know, I know, I know. Okay, so that takes care of that. Um, there's a couple folks from the Edible Garden project that I don't have availability for yet, so Mohammed Alesa. Yep. You told me in the other class too, but tell me yeah. again, man. Tuesday, uh, Thursday, uh, after. Tuesday, Thursday, what? Yeah, after. after, okay, got it. Uh, and then um, Rashad Alawajani? Okay, got it. And uh, Jorge Garcia. Is Jorge here? Okay. Um, and then Eduardo Lopez Madero. Hey, I missed you in the last class, man. Yeah, I know. Okay. So w when are you available? Tuesday, Thursday. Yep. After class. Got it. Tuesday, Thursday before 2.30? Yeah. Got it. Bernice Mendoza, you told me in the last class too, but I forget. Um, Didn't you or did you? Yeah. I thought so. Tell me again. Before or after? Before. Okay. <clears throat> and Kevin, you're, you're, you're the garden project, right? One to two, Tuesday, Thursday? Got it. And Faris. Faris Asbai? Before or after? Okay, got it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I've got availability, but uh, Alyssa, have you sent me your professional development plan yet? No. Can you please? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and then Abdullah Alabadi Alabidi. Abdullah. Okay. Um, Abdullah Al Nasser. Okay. Um, you're still in the other project. You I, I, have you just chosen another one, or you still want to like? Wait for another. Garden? Okay. Uh, and what is your availability? Okay, Tuesday, Thursday after class. Perfect. Um, Andrew Bird. Yeah. Are you still? I'm gonna do uh, the condors. Okay. And what's your availability? Uh, Tuesday, Thursday before four after this class. And Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, uh, afternoon, but it kind of changes the thing on the day. That's fine. I'll put afternoon sometimes. Okay. Uh, and have you sent me a professional development plan yet? I have it. I'm not sent it though. Okay. You have it, but you haven't. You'll send it. I'll send it. Okay. Cool. Um, Melissa Moreno. Are you still on the fence? Or you, have you chosen a project? We can still we can still do other ones. There's a couple people that like you know that like like uh, Alyssa said that was presenting last time, like there's some other projects we can get to if there's none of none of these that you want to be on. Otherwise I can put you on one of the projects. I'll wait. Okay. That's fine. But tell me your availability at least. Okay, perfect. Uh, Richard. Yes, sir. Uh, you told me in the last class, but tell me again. Uh, Thursday right before this class. Okay, Thursday before class. Um, Justin, yep. you just emailed me with it. So I haven't looked at it yet, but I've got it. Um, see, inbox. Um, Jimmy, did you say you sent me yours too? You, I, I saw it. Yeah, you sent it. I just haven't had a chance to record it yet. 
the inbox. Um, Steven, you told me before. And that just leaves uh, Erica Balthazar, who also told me in the last class, but I forgot, so tell me again. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays before this class. Okay. Awesome. So that is it. Um, cool. Just a couple outstanding uh, professional development plans, and that's it. Um, Marcella Mendoza? Yes. Um, oh, yeah. I, I need your professional development plan still, right? I sent it, and I did mention that I have you for both the recording. Yep. I may have just not recorded it from the other class. Hang on. Um, yep, we're good. Sorry about that. Okay, no Thanks. Okay. So that's that. Um, <clears throat> so let's dive in on web development. course documents. Okay, so um, there's pretty widely divergent Pretty widely divergent, like comfort levels, skill sets, um, familiarity in this class with respect to web development. So this may be this may be um, remedial for some of you, and it may be like quite new and and hard, like fast to follow for others. I try to get like the baseline of what I think every small business professional should be able to do with respect to web development, and graphic design. So. Um, Website, <clears throat> like there's lots of other, lots of other ways to present information in HTML format. Uh, emails you can send to people, various mobile uh, texts and so forth. Uh, but there's there's still real there's still real no real like complete substitute for a website where you can pretty much design the look and feel however you want. And if nothing else, it needs to have. Uh, four elements. It's got to have a basic storefront, which kind of gives people an overview of basically what you do and what you offer, and it's got a navigation bar on it that allows people to visit other places in the site. You need an about us section with contact information, um, usually some basic background on the people that work at the company to give uh, give the company some street credibility and, 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 and background for people that uh, are not familiar with it. Um, and then profiles of products and services. Pretty, pretty straightforward, but uh, um, how many people in here like, have developed various websites in the past? Okay, so this is new for most of you. Um, how many people think that it would be quite easy to make a website? It is, actually, that's, that's the whole point. Um, you don't need, I mean, obviously, you can you can do a lot of fancy stuff with it that, that goes beyond the skill set of this class, but as a jack of all trades, there's no reason why a normal small business professional cannot put up a professional looking website in really very little time. So um, <clears throat> there's two different software packages that uh, um, are really good for. So I'm going to talk about both graphic design and web development today. In graphic design. Um, you know, you want to have visuals, pictures, illustrations on your website that that more or less reflect the the message that the small business is trying to send. And you know, not, this is not an art class. I'm not like interested or concerned with teaching you guys how to make pretty things. But there's some basic. What's that? There's some basic. Uh, basic skill sets of just taking existing photos, cropping them, adding some text and adding some shapes to them that really 
can do a lot to to illustrate uh, what you're trying to illustrate as a, as a company. So Photoshop is really a more robust software. Uh, it costs about 20 bucks a month in a subscription. Pixlr, uh, which we'll use a little bit today, is completely free, and you just go to this website and you can use it. It has almost the same functionality as Photoshop. It's not quite as robust. Um, for web development, Dreamweaver, which comes as part of the same subscription price, I think you can get Dreamweaver and uh, Photoshop for 30 bucks a month subscription. Um, and that gives you the, the ability to really change everything from the ground up on, on a website. It, it gives you the, the great ability to edit everything possible. Wix, which we're gonna go through in detail today. Um, how many people have used Wix before? So Justin, tell us a little bit about your experience with it. Um, Wix is, it, is very easy to design a website, however, um, it has a downside to it, and I think that it's not uh, SEO friendly, uh, search engine friendly. Uh -huh. No, it could be. And um, so <coughs> if, if you're just trying to get a website up, it's fine. If you're trying to get people to get to your website, not fine. Yeah. Well, there's other, you know, Weebly. Um, yeah. There's Weebly, there's uh, GoDaddy, and there's a lot of people that do a competing service to Wix. Um, I'm familiar with how to use this one, and for most of the purposes of this class, it's fine. But yeah, I uh, I agree that they're they have their limits, just like everybody. Else. But basically, Wix uh, is is like paint by numbers web development. You like anything you can click on, you can edit just with simple menu options, and it's you can look, make a really look professional looking website pretty easily and quickly. Um, so I'm going to go through what I call a crash course in graphic design, then a crash course in web development for Wix. We'll talk a little bit about a few things that I want you guys to understand how to do in Dreamweaver, because there's just a couple. A lot of times in this class, or a lot of times in small business in general, you're not actually building a complete new website, you're just adding pages to an existing website. And when you're doing that, Wix doesn't really help you much. You need to actually be able to link into the FTP server of whatever the uh, the website is and download and upload pages. So we're gonna talk just a little bit about that with Dreamweaver. Um, and then just a little bit of, uh, of information at the end and that's it. So um, getting into the graphic design portion here, I'm gonna get out of the, uh, get out of the, the uh, PowerPoint here and go into Pixlr. So, Pixlr is just a website, but it has, it, it's like software out in the cloud. So you can use the graphic design software without having to pay for it. So pixlr.com. And you just simply go in and launch the Pixlr editor. And this pretty much gives you all the same functionality as, uh, um, all the same functionality as a uh, as Photoshop does. So, um, how many people in here are familiar with uh, Snagit? The software called Snagit. Um, okay, I'm going to try and see if we can download that here quickly. I probably can't now that I think about it because I don't have the. <laughs> Did you guys know that like professors no longer have the like administrative rights to add or upgrade software on their own computers in this campus, <laughs> including the classroom computers. Uh, it, we might be able to get it to work, but we may not. Let me, let me see quick. If not, I can show you a different way. Um, well, actually, let's not even waste time with that right now. Look, suffice it to say, I'm going to show you another way to do things, but um, the, the first thing I wanted to show you was uh, taking a screenshot and then cropping and using the image. So um, Snagit, if you just go, it's free software. If you just go out to Google and type in S-N-A-G-I-T, um, you can go download that for free, uh, put it on your, your laptop or your desktop, and that's a, it's, it's, it's a little bit easier to use. Um, it's a little bit easier to use uh, for, for doing screenshots of stuff. So um, the other way, the, sort of the old-fashioned way to do a screenshot is simply to do um, shift print screen or control print screen. So anything you see, anything you pull up on your 
computer, anything that's on the screen, you can basically take a picture of and then chop out what you want from that picture. So let's say, I kind of like this cartoon here. Let's say we wanted to actually use that cartoon to represent something on our website. So we don't want all the rest of this. We just want this cartoon right here. So if you just click print screen on the keyboard, and different keyboards have different places where the print screen button is, but there is a button called print screen. Um, and if you just do that, you can then open up the paint function, just copy paste. You, you're, you're, for you to print screen and then just control V to paste it into the, the, the paint function here. And then we're just going to go and choose the crop tool and crop that. Hit enter. And then just go to save as. We'll save it as a JPEG. And uh, we'll just put it on the desktop here so we can find it easier, easily. Um, so now, if we like get out of paint and go to open image from computer, we can then go to the desktop, open up cartoon, and it looked ah, it looks like it didn't crop properly. So we can also crop in um, in Pixlr here. Um, if you just go in and highlight here and then hit enter, we've just got the cartoon left. Um, and it looks kind of looks kind of grainy, but that's just because the, 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 it's just because the, uh, the image was smaller than it needs to be in the zoom. But you can see high quality, um, picture if we actually don't want that free trial stuff and draw with sketchbook we just want the cartoon we can crop a little more so and then hit enter again and we just got the cartoon so this button here in the upper left hand corner that looks like two two right angle rulers going on top of each other that's the crop tool so if you select that and then just take your mouse hold down the left mouse button and highlight whatever it is that you want to keep from a, a picture. Um, that's what you need to do to crop pictures. So um, first thing from first thing is uh, screenshots to JPEG. Second thing is cropping images. Um, before I go on to adding shapes and adding text, um, you know, it, it just a couple years ago. Um, when I wanted to find the, the right kind of image, I would just do a screenshot after I found it. Um, happily, uh, we don't need to do that anymore because uh, Google Image, I mean, sometimes you just can't find exactly what you want and you need to do a screenshot. But a lot of times, um, if we're, um, like, let's say we wanted, we want a picture of, I'm trying to think, so, um, we're going to do, um, we're gonna, like, in this class, the garden project is a lot more, the garden project and shout um, are a lot more, I mean, potty boss a little bit, but we did most of the web development work last year already on that one. So the condors don't really need any help with the, a website. They've already got really nice looking web materials, but the, 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 the garden could use a lot of help. So let's just say we want pictures of community gardens. You know, so rather than going out and surfing around the web trying to find a good picture or taking a photo and then uploading the, the, the JPEG file from your phone, you can just type in images of puppies, emojis, bed bugs, shopkins. We want um, community gardens. And there we go. Like, this is kind of what the raised beds will look like when we're done. Um, if we want to get some pictures of 
a little bit more of trees and raised beds. So we got some trees in the background here. You can find pretty much any image that you could possibly want on Google Images. Yes, Justin. Isn't that copyright though? What you're doing? Um, some of it is, some of it isn't. Um, but in general, until you get to a certain point of legitimacy with a website, nobody cares if you're using their copyrighted picture. You want to remember where you got it from, and especially for our edible garden, um, you know, pretty quickly, we'll uh, like we, we may actually like take our own pictures and swap them out. But to give people in the community an idea of where we're going, um, I, I have never had any problem in using these things short term. Now, if you're going to have that image permanently on the website, you need to pay the the proper copyright. Uh, but nobody knows that the website's there. Certainly, when you're building a new website. Um, nobody's going to go out and search and give you a hard time about using Google Images stuff. Eventually, you want to remember where you got it because if you use it on your website permanently, you do indeed, like Justin said, need to pay um, copyright royalties to whoever owns the picture. But in the short term, um, unless you unless you have a certain level of like visibility for your website, uh, and unless you're planning on using the image long term, uh, it really uh, by the time you get the by the time you get approval for the document, um, you could have already like, you missed three or four business opportunities that you could have had if you just had the right images up there. So yes, it is an issue, not so much unless you're planning on using the image permanently. Um, so that is another place to get photos. So um, I'm gonna actually use this one because I like, I like this one better for what I wanna il illustrate next in the cartoon. So. Um, if you just right click on the image, um, you can save it. Again, we'll just put it on the desktop, community garden, save. And then if we go back to Pixlr, um, we can go ahead and just close this one, no. And then we're gonna open another image from the computer. This time we're gonna take that community garden picture, open it up, and um, I want to add some descriptions to this picture that are de that describe to people the elements that we're going to have in our community garden. Okay, so you can have a picture here that looks really nice and professional, but um, what I actually want to show, I want to have a little like arrow showing like we're going to have raised beds like this. You know, this is like I, I want to give it. A, I want to put. A, I want to put text and some shapes with this illustration so that everybody that goes to the website can clearly see this is what I'm talking about. So in order to do that, we need to click on a couple different buttons here on the left-hand side. Um, you see the little, um, little shape, ah, that's a gradient tool, the little, like, the little square and circle that's what we want next. So we're gonna select that square and circle and this allows us to draw squares, circles, lines on the, uh, on the screen. So if we start with this ellipse and then we tell it that we want, we don't want it to have a fill shape and we take the Capacity down to zero. Uh, it's still not doing what I wanted to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so we're going to go ahead and take that out. Um, and do this a different way. So if we want to point to this box right here, and we want the line to be a little bit bigger so we can actually see it. And 
it's still not working. I hate when that happens. <laughs> it works a little bit differently for me in Photoshop normally. So um, let me move on to the next thing I wanted to illustrate, and we'll get back to that uh, shortly. Um, we can put here. Um, Black looks pretty good there, but we're going to want to put in I want to put in a, uh, a shape behind it. Ah. It's not working right now either. Crap. <laughs> so um, the the net result of this kind of abortive use of print pixels, and I think they sometimes change around how the software works, and then I have to like figure it out again. Um, I'm accustomed to using Photoshop more often than Pixlr, uh, actually. So let me get back to that and go on to Wix right now. Uh, and at the first part of the next class session, I will like review graphic design again and we'll go over some of the things that didn't work here. But basically, uh, for, for our purposes in Wix, um, I'm going to go ahead and save this image. To the desktop, so we're going to use it again a little bit later. Um, and then we will go to Wix. So if I go back to the PowerPoint again, um, this last point here, Pixlr versus Photoshop, <laughs> there's certain things that work slightly different in the two softwares. So um, this, is, this is one of them. Um, Wix, OK. Okay, so first thing you got to do is create an account. Uh, it's free. You don't have to pay anything for it, but uh, I've already got one here. Um, can't remember that password though. Let me use another account instead. Perfect. Okay, so <clears throat> once you open up a, uh, a new account with Wix, um, you'll land at a page that looks something like this. Um, it's going to ask you, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it's going to ask you if you want to create a new site. Okay, uh, it's going to give you a bunch of, it's going to give you a bunch of template options for that too. So. Um, this is actually, uh, since I already have a, a, an account, it lands at a different page. But once you create your account for the first time, you're going to land at a page that looks like this. And very simply, you know, depending on what kind of of website you're you're needing to create, this is this is the, uh, the the place. So let's like most of what we're talking about in here is broadly stated business websites. So we'll click on business, and then. We will start with the Wix editor. And 
you can choose any of these themes. So you can see here consulting and coaching, service and maintenance, like all kinds of different types of um, types of websites. You know, I'm going to go to a restaurant and food and see what we can do for um, the, the edible garden instead. Um, so food and drinks, you, all kinds of different um, all kinds of different uh, um, templates you can you can start from. So um, this like organic garden garden services here, um, that's kind of close to what we want to talk about. So if we start there, um, that'll probably be less edits that we have to make later. So you can either view it and take a look at all the different pages, decide if you like that template or another one better. And if once you like it, you just click on edit and that'll open up the Wix editor. It'll do this funny looking thing for you for a second and then um, there's a great little like intro video you're welcome to watch. I'm going to kind of give you my own intro video right now. So the concept, the concept uh, about Wix is, is all about object oriented controls. So pretty much everything on this screen, if you click on it, you can edit it. You can delete it, you can move it around, you can change the picture, you can do anything on here just by clicking on visually what you want to change. So for example, if we go to this picture here, I, I left clicked on the picture and now there's options up here, settings, design, animate, stretch, or change images. So if I want that picture that we just had, um, I can actually upload pictures from Oh, you see that one? That's me with long hair at my sister's uh, wedding reception. <laughs> we all wore kilts for the wedding. Uh, so if I go to the desktop here and grab that picture we made before. Um, done. Add to gallery. And then done. You'll see I just change the image that was there to whatever I wanted to upload. Now, if I don't want an image there at all, if I just, you know, I want to rearrange what's on the screen here, again, if I just highlight that picture, so I left click on the picture and I hit delete, gone. Same thing for here. If I, you know, if I, if I want to edit this text, I can actually just click on it, double click, and it'll open it up. Uh, other text here. Um, if I don't want text there at all and I just want to get rid of it, again, I can highlight this whole area here and delete it. Okay? Now, if you want to add a whole new sort of theme here, um, you can go to add on the left hand side and it gives you text, images, pretty much anything you could want to add, including a lot of like multimedia stuff. But if we want to start with a new shape here at the top to put the picture behind, maybe we want to go and put a little like background area here that we're then going to like put the picture on top of. So we can go in and expand the size of this thing just by left clicking and dragging on the on the uh, the window that yeah, looks okay for now so then just click enter and it's all good and then we want to add that image of the garden that we had so you go back to add image now instead of add shape and my image uploads is the first option there whatever image it was that you found out in Google Maps or you did a screenshot of and cropped if you want to then bring that into the website, you just go to add image, my image uploads. And this time we'll actually, just for fun, um, we'll use the, uh, this is my, uh, my sister's father-in-law here. And then um, let's say, you know, we're talking about organic 
beer. So just to go with the theme here, you can also then go in and add text next to this. So choose all kinds of different uh, styles and headings and so forth. Um, I'll probably just choose this nice simple one here for now. Um, highlight the text. Crap, hang on. Bring it up here and then if you double click on that we can type um, you know uh, edible garden brewery project. I'm going to want to make that a little bit bigger so it stands out as a header. That's too big. Uh, we'll actually do that and then we'll resize the window. Make it bold so it stands out a bit. Underline it. Close. And then if you just pull the window here, it'll make enough space for the text to be all on one on one line. So then we can go in and click add again and uh, go down to the paragraph here and uh, just pull that up here, double click it and uh, this is a description of the garden brewery project. And just add the text, whatever you want to describe there. Um, pretty much like point and click. So um, if we, uh, if you want to add or change the pages. So right now this website has three pages in it, home, services, and visit us. If you want to add a page for the brewery project, for example, you just, again, you go, you, there's two ways you can do it. You can either highlight just left click on the menu and hit manage menu or you can go up here to the upper left hand corner and this tells you all the pages that are available uh, and it gives you the option to add a page so we add a page new page and we're gonna call this brewery project done and you notice now there's a new page added for Brewery Project. But maybe we want that to come after services. So if you just click on the left and drag, you can move it to a different location. So now it's actually underneath services. If we want it to be um, not underneath services, we'll do that. But anyway, this, this allows us to go and edit the different pages. So now there's nothing on the brewery project page because it's a brand new page so we're gonna start adding text images whatever we want to this page um, so let me this before I go on to a couple of other like technical things about using Wix questions about what I've shown so far okay cool so um, there's a couple other things I wanted to illustrate here. Um, so we've gone over adding, deleting pages. We've done editing pages, changing colors and backgrounds. And then we've already actually already talked about text boxes and shapes. We've talked about adding and editing and images. Uh, so we got multimedia objects, um, colors and backgrounds, and then publishing. So um, if you want to change this nice like leafy background here, if you just, again, let right click in that area, or left click, excuse me, I'm, I'm left clicking in the area of the background and change page background. I can change the whole thing to bananas instead. Or just these bubbles. Or um, I can actually do, what's that? Um, and right now this is only applying to the brewery page so if we go back to other pages it'll have uh, it'll have the other background but we can apply it to the other pages in the website just by clicking here um, if you just want to 
color it yourself and you don't want an image, you can just go into the color picker and um, pretty much add any shade of color you want. just by doing that, okay? So all I'm doing is left clicking where the background was and then pulling up, um, I'm left clicking, clicking on change page background and all of that I did, if, if I wanted to upload an image, so the entire garden picture is in the background, all I gotta do is hit image instead of color. Um, so everything you see here, if you wanna take away the the, if you want to take away this little like strip at the bottom, just click on it and hit delete. Okay. Um, if we wanted to take away the title at the top and that little leaf, just highlight it, delete it. And if you want to add anything else, you just go in here and the combination of going out onto the internet to Google Images, grabbing the image that you want. Um, pulling it up into that uploader and then putting it wherever, wherever you want on this page is all you got to do. And then to add text to describe things, so forth and so on, you're just going to go to add, the little plus sign here, and whatever you want to add. Now, multimedia wise, um, there's all kinds of other stuff. So I'm just showing you very basic stuff so you can basically have images, text, and links between pages so that you can demonstrate a basic concept with pictures and words. Um, there's plenty of other stuff you can add here pretty easily. Uh, for example, um, videos, social media content. Um, if you want to sort of choose from a you know, pre-made video gallery, you can do that. If you want to upload your own uh, like uploaded videos, uh, same thing. You just uh, uh, you just choose up here. Um, where is the my own uploads part? Yeah. So if we. Uh, if we just click YouTube, pull it up here, and then um, like all of the all the videos from my like class uh, podcast, for example, uh, every video in YouTube. How many people in here are familiar with making a, a video and posting it to YouTube? Okay, so many of you. you know, as you know, each video on YouTube has a unique like address for it. If I want my, like, if we did a video talking about the edible garden, you know, um, and we wanted to then upload it, we just go and tell, um, we tell Wix whatever the, uh, the address is, and it'll, it'll put a link right to our, our, our video we made about, uh, about the garden on the page where we want it. So um, that's just one element. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can see here in the ad section, um, social media stuff. Um, uh, there's, you, you can pretty you can add a store pretty easily here. You can add a blog, all kinds of stuff. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Um, you know, E-commerce, like PayPal, is relatively easy to use, and I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about it when we go through the the like financial part of the lecture, but. Even if you don't want to go through the minimum amount of effort necessary to like figure out how to use PayPal, Wix has got it all ready for you. You just click on the like PayPal Buy Now button there, and you'll have the ability to collect money through PayPal like that. Um, now, the last thing was publishing to the web. So after you're done with all your edits, um, and you want to publish things to the web, I don't like that background. Let's change it back to something something nice, um, put it simple color for this point. Yeah, so once we've got the, the website kind of looking the way we want it, um, you just go over here to publish. Like this, is, this is a very important point because if you don't publish it, then no one else can see it. So um, 
if you're working on, uh, on a web development project and once you've sort of made all the edits and then you want my input on it, you have to click publish, I, otherwise I can't see the damn thing, okay? So when you're done with all your edits, just click publish and you can give it, we're gonna call this uh, edible garden test. Um, save and continue. And now, this, publish now. Now this little, this address right here is what we need to be able to see the page. So if I just click view site, you see that's the edit that we made before. Um, if we click on brewery project here, you'll see this is where we put that video in there. We didn't edit the other uh, pages yet, but um, now it's all published and ready to go. Um, and all you got to do is send people to this link right here. So if you want it to say like, you know, www.csubeditablegarden.com, um, you can, all you have to do, like, the people that the people that license and, and approve domain names for websites are not the same people that offer the web development software. So Wix will offer to find you a domain name and charge you a little bit of extra money for that. Um, they will charge you no matter what. The way they make their money is once you want to have this in a domain name, you need to pay them to like release the web page to your domain name. But you don't actually have to have Wix find that domain name for you. You can go straight to Network Solutions or any of a number of companies, get the domain name you want, and just simply tell Wix, okay, I'm taking the bargain basement like $9.99 a month option, point to this address. And as soon as you do that, the address here will no longer say like your username.wixsite.com forward slash whatever. It'll just say csubeditablegarden.com and no one will ever know that you used Wix to develop it. Um, it also takes the bottom bar off yep. and that little thing up at the top right corner. Yes, you no longer have those advertisements once you do that. Um, any questions about that before I go briefly to Dreamweaver? It's pretty straightforward, huh? <coughs> um, okay, finally, uh, you know what? It's a little early to stop, but now that I think about it, Dreamweaver is on my laptop. Um, I'm going to need to hook the laptop up to be able to show it, and I'm not sure if it's going to work properly. So, um, why don't? Uh, is anybody going to be terribly upset if we call it a night and we talk? I, I figured you wouldn't be upset about that. So, make sure that I have my sign-up sheet so I can give everybody extra credit for today, and um, let's just. Uh, Let's just shoot for uh, for Thursday and pick up where we left off here. The young lady that gave me this, I don't know where you're sitting. There you are. Can you come talk to me real quick? Richard, yes. Also, I sent you the rough draft when I had printed it out. 
It's complete. They're just punctuation errors in there. I don't know if you want me to send you the one I, I had edited. The, the, the but the professional basic, development plan? Yeah. That's fine. But the basic ideas, I mean, everything's there. Just I left a comma here. It should have put a period. Those, I don't know if that's uh, going to bother you. If it yeah. is, I'm going to send you yeah. the one. Yeah. Okay. That's I just fine. wanted, I don't want you to be all this guy dumb or yeah. you didn't have enough respect to no, go back and it's fine, double man. check it. If, if there's anything I can't understand, I'll let you know. Cool. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks. Have a good night. No problem. You too. See you tomorrow, man. Yes. So since since, since the condos already has an established website here, uh -huh. do we have people who are in the condos project you have no project to do? No, no, no. You do. Well, you're just not going to be doing this part of the project. Oh, so we're exempt from this. Web development. Yeah, but like, this is, it's, you don't need to do web development for your project in the class, but, you know, six months, a year from now, when you open your restaurant, you're going to want to build a website, and that's why I'm teaching you this stuff. Does make sense? So I'm, I'm going over all the skill sets that I think a small business owner should have, but your project is really only going to be guerrilla marketing. Um, that's, like, the whole Converse project is basically about guerrilla marketing. Okay. If so I live on the coast, I, I two, one or two weeks we'll get to guerrilla marketing and then you'll see everything you talking about for, for your project. Make sense? Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to organize my class. What exactly I have to do? Well, right now you don't have to do anything. Um, yeah, right now all you have to do is pay attention in class and uh, um, I will, like, I'm going to email the group with next steps. Um, oh crap! I didn't rearrange the seating. <laughs> Damn it! Um, I just remember that right now. Um, yeah, I'll I'll email the group about what we're gonna do next. Like uh, next steps. Really, I need to get I need to get a big map of like when all the different classes are and student group meetings are. Get that all planned out, probably, and then probably could could my group see my phone just because I'm, I'm blind from the side. Uh huh. Uh, too much boxing, I can't, I can't see other sides. That's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, thank you for saying that. We'll put uh, we'll put the condors here, and then I mean, there's so many people in the garden project. Probably like that entire half of the room plus part of the back is going to be garden. Um, no, that's cool. We'll do that first thing next time. Um, let me actually make a note here. Um, so, uh, let's do... No, that's okay. Garden. Uh, this is... Professor, have a good night. You too. Shout. Um, and then we're going to put condors... And then um, body boss and other. Cool. Okay. I'll, that's first thing next session. We'll I'll organize that, and condors will be up here so you can see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for for the, the, the other class, uh, do we all have to exchange information you know, out of our little group now that you've assigned us to the city? Uh, or mass email? How, how do we communicate with each other? And try I to will. Do? I will mass email all of you. Okay. So once I send an email to the group, then you'll have everybody's email address. Mm -hmm. I would suggest you all get your cell phone numbers from each other too, so that you can like you don't have to just use email. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'll email everybody in the group, and then you'll have all the all the email addresses in the the copy line. Okay. How, how many of these is there? Like six or so six. the condors, or for the other one? For the other one. Uh, irrigation. Yeah. Uh, I think there's six. eight or nine. Eight or nine? Yeah. No, there's more. So there's seven or eight. I can't. I don't know. Here, let me <laughs> tell you right now. Uh, I'm sorry for blaming That's okay. Me. What's um, your question while I'm opening that up? About websites. Uh huh. For nonprofits, mm -hmm. do you have to already have like 501 Wait, to open the website? To have a dot org. Um, I don't know. It's a good question. I think there's like some um, requirement, but I'm not sure what it is. Let's find out. Um, I'm curious. Like, I don't know the answer to this question, but I would think through the just anybody, you know, have to, I don't know. through the wonderful power of Google, um, do I need a what is it? Um, the 501 
501c3 to get a .org website. Let's find out. Um, um, registrations. Um, I don't know, without spending too much time, go into Google, look it up. Okay. I don't know the answer. Um, you might be able to get one without anything, but you might actually have to have like some, you might have to give them like your, your like 501c3 ID number yeah. or something, but it, 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 it ever, it's pretty easy to get that org name. Yeah. Um, it, if, 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 if anything, it's probably going to be one document that you had to fill out and then give them the official like document number. And you might not even need that. Okay. I just thought you might know. I do not off the top okay. of my head, unfortunately. Okay. I saw how um, there's like a project I want to send you, but it's like a really big project. That's fine. Okay. Send me whatever you want. I, <laughs> I, I love projects. I'm, try, I'm like having trouble myself, like kind of pulling it. Um, yeah, send, it may take me a couple days to respond, but send me everything you got, and I'm happy to give you feedback on whatever you want. And I can find an answer for that if you can't, if you don't, if you can't figure it out. I, honestly, I haven't really looked yet. Yeah, look, um, if you can't find it, let me know, and I'll, I'll figure it out for you. But off the top of my head, I don't know. Okay. Two, three, four, Thank five, you. six. No problem. Nine, eight, nine, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine irrigation. So cool. What else can I do for you, man? Uh, that's just it. Okay. Uh, now that I mean, there's there's personal questions I'd, I'd like to ask you, but I don't know if you are. Oh. What's that? <laughs> personal questions. Uh, well, ask ask away. I, I'm like heading back towards my office and then home, but you, you got you got my attention until I'm I get back to my office. <laughs>